Today we are gonna fix Potato Jet's iPhone vlogging setup. He recently posted a video uh, with an iPhone vlog rig, a whole a whole crazy rig, and we're, we're gonna fix it. It seems that a bunch of you that subscribe to my channel also subscribe to his channel, because after he posted that video, I got a ton of messages from you guys saying, why does his footage sound so good, but look so wonky? Specifically, when, when Dylan and Sam were fighting with the swords, it was like, it was really really crazy looking, why? And since I just did a video about the Rode vlogging kit, the Rode vlogging kit setup, uh, I had the same issue in my video. It just wasn't as apparent because I wasn't sword fighting in my video. So you just didn't notice it or it didn't bug the eye so much, but I had the same issue. So we're gonna fix both the issues today. So first let's build Potato Jet's setup. I'm, I'm gonna kind of Frankenstein together the pieces that I have. I don't have that Joby tripod thing that he does, but I have one similar. That is the, the Ulanzi MT-16. The main reason the MT-16 is different than the Rode is, is it if you pull, it has a little extendable bit where the road does not. The road is just, it's just the handle. Again, I have an extension piece that you can put in there. Check that in the last video, but in just their normal form. This is the road like this and the Alonzi can extend. So today we're gonna use this as our tripod bit and we're gonna steal the phone mount off of the road setup. Okay, so we got the tripod. The next piece that he put on there was a, a dual cold shoe on top. We got that, the Olanzi PT2. And then on top of his two cold shoes, he put a video mic NTG and a video mic pro, one facing forward and one facing backwards. My, my video mic NTG is up on this thing, so we'll just put a video mic pro facing forwards and a video mic, video mic row facing backwards. This is already getting ridiculous for an iPhone. <laughs> Not already, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and then on top of this rig, he had in two of the small rig friction arms so that he could mount lights on this rig. And I've only got one of these friction arms, but you get the idea. I think he had the new Aperture MC light out here. This is the old Aperture ALM9, but still a good little light. That's, <laughs> look how silly that looks. <laughs> and he had two of these arms with two lights, one facing forward and one facing backwards. And then the other piece that he had that I don't even have is the Rode dual lightning to TRRS connector. So basically a connector goes into your phone and then both of these microphones can plug into that connector. And then you can actually plug into a headphone jack and monitor the audio. This is a ridiculous iPhone rig. But again, we're gonna fix this rig. Uh, the other thing that he was using was something called ProTake and it's an app, it's a filmmaking app, uh, which gives you full manual controls. I think you do pay for it. I think it's $10 for the first year and then $20 after that. I, I paid the 10 bucks. I looked at the app, it looks sweet, take my money. By the way, Potato Jet's video was sponsored by ProTake. Uh, it is a really good app, but this video is not sponsored by ProTake or, or any one really there's no sponsor for this video so hit the like button that helps a lot oh go to the merch site go to the merch site maybe pick yourself up some merch that that helps again not sponsored but with a rig like this why did it, potato jets video sound so good but look so wonky and why did my road video also have a really similar wonkiness just not as pronounced and why would you even use a pro app why would you why wouldn't you just use the video app built into your iphone hit record you're filming video and all three answers come back to the same thing and it's it's shutter speed when you are filming at 24 frames a second you want your shutter speed to be at 1 48th of a second for the most natural motion blur again see watch see my hand i wave it it looks blurry now you just wave your hand in front of your face in real life it's blurry. So this video right now is being shot at 24 frames a second. This camera is set to 1 50th of a second shutter speed, close enough to 1 48th. And, and now I have really natural motion blur. If I was to crank the shutter speed up on my camera, it would look as jerky as Gene's video sword fight looked. And again, as jerky as my road vlogging kit video looked, I just didn't move around as much. I was on a skateboard, so you saw a little bit with a background, but I, I wasn't swinging a sword, so you didn't notice the jerkiness. All right, so we dropped 10 bucks. We downloaded the ProTake app. We set the frames per second to 24. We set our shutter speed to 148th. We dropped the ISO all the way down as low as it can go. And, and we realized while we're outside in bright, sunny sunlight, uh, I 
and you you still kind of can't see anything. The screen is just pure white, totally overexposed. So what's the answer? And and Gene actually mentioned it in his video. At the end of his video, he mentioned the next thing he needs to build this kit, and it is the Polar Pro light chaser pro system and the reason that this system is is amazing is because of these guys a three to five stop variable nd filter for your phone and a three to five stop mist filter for your phone so this case pops on my phone and then i can use variable nd filters with the pro take app i can get my shutter speed dialed in to a 140th of a second and, and get smooth, buttery, cinematic footage. The kit itself, it, it comes with the case. There's the, the iPhone 12 Pro case. It's got the two variable ND filters. We've got a Bluetooth shutter, which I'll go over in a minute. And then it, it actually has its own little grip thing, but it doesn't have a cold shoe on top. So for today, I'm gonna be using the Rode iPhone mount. This is, this is basically a mount for the phone in the case that mounts to a tripod but it has a quarter 20 on top and not a cold shoe. So I'm gonna use this one. But let's swap out the case so I can get this in here. This, this thing has gotta go. No, don't use a friction arm on your iPhone vlogging setup. I think Gene did this part as a joke. I think the arms, I think the arms were a joke. Don't do this. Ooh, it's a good, it's a good feeling case. Got a little bit of felt on the inside there. That'll be nice. I see that it has like a circular thing on it. I wonder if that is so that the magnetic thing on the iPhone 12 Pro still works while using this case. That would be super nice. All right, iPhone 12 Pro popped in. So you can see kind of how the mounting system works. Check this out. You see that mounting system around the camera lenses? So there's those two little outside bits. That's where the variable ND filter is gonna hook on. And let's just go with the regular one today. If you don't know the difference between a variable ND filter and a mist filter, maybe I'll uh, go over that in a future video, but we'll just use the variable ND filter today. Keep it simple, stupid. Oh, right. Oh, that's actually pretty slick. Look at this. So the variable ND filter comes with its own little filter case, which is really similar to the older Peter McKinnon variable ND filter from Polar Pro. How do they make it so little like that? Just get it slotted into the grooves and click it on. Oh, that is beautiful. Check that thing out. Look at that. That is so rad looking. A variable ND filter on your iPhone. So this is gonna go from three to five stops. I don't know if they even have a six to nine stop one. I don't think you would need it with the iPhone. I think three to five stops is gonna be plenty, but this is what's gonna reduce that light so you can stay at 1 40th of a second. And uh, let's let's get it back into this, this rig here. All right, check that out. So now we got this guy like this in the rig. Now let's let's quickly solve this mic issue. These mics are ridiculous. Having two giant mics on top of your iPhone is ridiculous. I also think Gene was joking. Gene, I hope you were joking with this. What I would say, if you are going to be shooting one directional, usually you're always gonna be facing forward, then I would say that mic that I reviewed last time, the Rode ME-L. Got some dead cat on my finger. This guy, this is the Rode ME-L. You see it's got it's got a lightning port right there on it. So this can just stuff right into the side of your phone, but your cell phone needs to be open. The case, ah shoot. The light chaser case does not do this. So on my OtterBox case, check this out. I slice the bottom wide open. I cut the entire bottom off. And that's because this piece needs to sit deep into the lightning port. It has to go all the way in. And if your case is, is raised at all, which the light chaser case does have a tiny little lip on there. And just that amount of lip keeps this from, from locking all the way in. Hmm. So I'm gonna have to cut this case also. But I do think that if you're using an iPhone, you're shooting one direction at a time. You're shooting forward or you're shooting backwards. Uh, then this is the right mic to go with. You just have to modify your case to make it work. But the, the Rode ME-L for one direction. For two directions, we've got the Deity D4 Duo. And this is basically what Gene was doing in his video. One mic that records forward into one channel, and then one mic that records backwards into a separate channel. 
And I think this is gonna do the trick. I do have a feeling, I do feel like I remember this mic having the two inputs going in. It still films forward mic and rear mic, but I think it puts them into one mono channel when you film into an iPhone. I'm not positive about that, but I think that's right. Uh, but if you are running a mic like this, even if you run something like the the Rode Video Micro on top, then you need that little lightning adapter. You need one of these little guys, plug it right into there and boom, into the iPhone. So right now I've, I've replaced Gene's giant two mics on top thing. No, I can't plug my headphones in to monitor my audio, but the ProTake app does have audio bars at the bottom. So I'll be able to monitor my audio in the app and just make sure it's not peaking. Probably keep it around that negative six to negative 12 area. And I, I, think, I think for an iPhone rig, this is probably fine. And then even if I wanted to add a light onto this system, I could put in a dual cold shoe up here, mount the mic right here. The Rode Video Micro, micro LED light, I could mount over here and uh, boom. Now I got dual front and rear microphones and a light going forward. And if you were using the light, then you would probably pop off the ND filter because that would mean it would be dark. So you wouldn't need the light and this at the same time. But if you're outside in super bright sunlight, having a sword fight on the beach, like Sam and Dylan were, then uh, probably don't need the light up top and you just need the ND filter. Now, this is cool and all. I, I really do like this mic better. So I'm, I'm gonna cut the light chaser case so I can make this mic work because I like this mic better than the dual setup. I don't need the dual setup. I, I just want one mic plugged into the side. All right, let's chop up a case. All right, we'll do the same way I did the other case. Ooh, I'm gonna, the case is slick. Look at this case they give you. Check that out. It's like a, it's the whole, it seriously looks just like how the Peter McKinnon one did where they give you like a case inside of a case. It's very clever. I really like Polar Pro stuff but I am about to chop up one of their phone cases. And I'm pretty much cutting here and here. I'm just gonna cut this whole bottom part out and hope that the case still has enough rigidity. Let's, let's find out. Oh my gosh, too much going on here. Ah, crap, come on. All right, I'm a little stumped right now because I can't get this bot. This bottom bit is like a harder plastic than was on my OtterBox one, so I can't just cut it with a razor blade. Um, I guess today we are using the Deity, but once I do get this modified enough, then we will use the Rode ME-L. Man, I feel like I can figure this out. We're gonna figure this out. I'm not quitting. Let's figure this out. I know this is a little extreme, but, but I want the Rode mic and I want the light chaser case, so. Huh. All right, we're getting there. First off, I do not recommend that you do this to your light chaser case because you could just mess it up entirely and then you don't have a case at all. But that worked really well. So now everything is covered in dust. All right, let's see how well it worked. It gets in there. Oh yeah, that looks pretty decent. Check that out. The entire bottom is now open. And again, if you look at it kind of this way, I got off just enough Back there where, oh, did I lose the mic? The mic pops right in. Oh yeah, look how well that seats. So now I got this guy over here. Let's pop that ND filter back on, check that out. And we got a variable ND and good audio in this setup. I'm digging this. I like this a lot. And because, because I now don't have a mic mounted on top, I could use Polar Pro makes their, their grip that I really liked from the last Light Chaser one. Just the grip on that side, that side, and it hooks into the rails of the phone. So this kind of hooks in like this, bingo bango. I've got a grip on the phone that has a quarter 20 on the bottom and quarter 20 on top. Uh, and then the other thing you can do with this thing is you can put it way over here. If you were doing like more handheld work with this thing, you can put it all the way over on the side. And now your phone 
has a grip, like a camera, it has like a camera grip on it. And then to take that even one step further, they sell this guy, the Bluetooth shutter, and the shutter is a little button. Get out. Oh jeez, oh jeez. Oh, by the way, this is not sponsored by Polar Pro. I wish it was. Polar Pro, you wanna sponsor some videos? Huh? It'd be fun. So this guy can mount on the top. And once that is mounted on there, oh, that's actually pretty slick. That's a cool setup. All right, so check this setup out. So now we got the ND filter over here. We've got the grip over here. And because of that little Bluetooth bit, I got a little on off switch for the Bluetooth. The, it gives me like a shutter button. Like it makes this whole setup feel like a real camera where I've got a shutter button where I can take photos. I can start and stop video. Uh, it it kind of has a, a real camera feel. Polar Pro is clever. I, I like the cleverness of Polar Pro. Today though, we are gonna use this rig just so we can keep things simple. And we're gonna get rid of this mic because I don't wanna use it. Slide this guy back in there. And right here, this is, this is Gene's rig with good audio. It's got the extendable handle. It doesn't have the lights. It doesn't have forward and rear audio at the same time, but rarely do you need that. And again, you could pop this on there if you wanted front and rear audio at the same time. But the biggest thing, the main thing that this fixes from Potato Jet's video, and it fixed mine as well, is I can now get the proper shutter speed. If you're gonna go out vlogging, uh, you, you pretty much just need a rig that looks like this and not, not that that crazy thing that Gene put together. <laughs> All right, let's go look at some sample test footage between not having a variable ND filter and having a variable ND filter, and you'll you'll immediately see why Gene's video and my road video uh, look, looked a little wonky. Something was off, something looked weird. Sounded great, looked weird. To wrap this whole thing up, uh, basically the whole point of this video is about ND filters. The way to fix Potato Jet's vlog setup really was just to add ND filters. Like, like he mentioned at the end of his video, he knows that it looked wonky, but uh, yeah, Polar Pro variable ND filters, really good. I'm super pumped. I haven't even tried out the mist filter yet for the phone. I've tried it out on my big camera and it's super dope. Oh yeah, look at that. God, they're so good at this stuff. Yeah, I'll be trying that ND filter out soon, but uh, if you are a iPhone vlogger and you wanna get better motion, motion that looks smooth or, or that you can control, ProTake app, it is a super sweet app, 10 bucks, and I've really liked it so far. I kinda haven't found anything that I haven't liked about it yet. So get that app, get the Polar Pro Light Chaser case with the at least the three to five variable ND filter. Pop that thing on there. Maybe you modify the case and you put the road mic on it. Maybe you just use the cold shoe and you use something even like the, the Rode Video Micro. Mount that bad boy up on top or mount the D4. Whatever you like, doesn't matter. All three of these are gonna give you significantly better audio than the built-in microphone on the phone. You can check my Rode vlogging video for that. And uh, yeah, this fixes Potato Jet's problem. The problem was the ND filter, shutter speed. ND filter solves that. Yeah, whew, this is a lot. I gotta clean all this up now. And you guys, you guys can't even see how messy. Look how messy this got. Got, it got so messy. There's so much stuff and there's dust from the Dremel. Freaking heck. <laughs> For real though, this was not sponsored at all. Go to the merch shop, grab some merch, hit the like button below. All those things help me make more videos on this channel. I'll see you guys soon. And Potato Jet, great vlogging setup, but the light things, that's just silly.